Hello and welcome. In this tutorial, we are going to be integrating Spring Web MVC and the time lift templating engine. This might come in handy when Spring Boot is not needed. So I'm using the Spring Tool Suite IDE, which is basically Eclipse, and I'll be deploying the basic application in a Tomcat server that I already have configured here. In the package explorer here, I'll then just right click and create a new Maven project. I'll create a simple project skip archetype selection. And for Maven, we always need a group ID. I'll name mine as follows. You can name yours whatsoever you want. And an artifact ID. I'll just go ahead and call it spring time leave config. And the packaging will be of type WA. Finish. The project creation is done and by default it is making use of Java 1.5. I will use the Maven compiler plugin and change this to Java 1.8. And inside here we also have an error. It is complaining about the missing web.xml file. Our project will be entirely Java config based so we need to disable this error. I'll just go ahead and copy this and add here properties and set that property to false. And I'll save that. The error is gone. Next, I'll add the Maven compiler plugin. So insert a new plugin. This is the Maven compiler plugin. This one. I'll take the latest version then I'll add here configuration and set the source to 1.8 and the target to 1.8 and I'll right click on the project Select Maven and update project. Okay. So the Java version has been changed here. Next, I'll add the dependencies we need for this application. So dependencies, add. We need the time lift dependency, this one. And we also need the time lift spring fall dependency. This one. Then I'll also add here Java X dot safe light. This one. I'll select this 3.1.0 version. Finally, we also need to add here the Spring Web MVC dependency. This one. Next, I'll create a configuration class, which is going to contain all the beans that configures the time lift templating engine. So I'll right click here and create a new Java class. I'll place that in a package. And I'll call it time leave config. Then I'll annotate this class with add configuration annotation and also enable web MVC by adding add enable web MVC annotation. According to the time lift theory specification, this class needs to extend the web MVC configurer adapter and also implement the application context aware interface. So extends web MVC configurer adapter and implement application context our Yeah, I'll add this on implemented method. This is basically a setter that provides the current application context. So here I'm going to define an application context. And 
happen or assign this application context to this one here. We are later on going to pass it to the time lift templating engine because it needs to know about the application context. So this that application context should be equal to this application context here. Then I'll add the following beans to configure the time lift templating engine. The first one will return the view resolver. And inside here, I'll declare a time lift view resolver object. Then we use this object to set the template engine, which is also a bin that we are going to create in a moment. And we can also set the character encoding, which is going to be in this case UTF-8. And now we return the object. So next we create this bin. So add bin annotation. This is also a public method that will return the template engine. And inside here we declare the spring template engine object. And then we use this object to enable the spring expression language compiler. I just set this to true. Then we also need to set the template resolver. It takes also this bin that we are going to create in a moment. And next, I just return this object. I'll just click here now and create this bin. I'll change this to public and annotate it with a bin annotation. And here, I'll declare a spring resource template resolver object we can then use it to set the application context as well as the prefix This is basically the location where we're going to place the timeleaf powered HTML pages. So according to timeleaf, this is supposed to be in the web inf directory, which is supposed to be located in this source folder here. So I'll add here web inf and I'll place it in a folder called template. Next, we set the template mode. This one. So this should be template mode .html. Then we add the suffix, which is basically the extension our file should have. It will be of .html extension. And we return this object. Now save this. And I'll also just go ahead here and add add component scan annotation. And here I'll place the following package org dot soft dot controllers. This basically means that when the beans here are being created, go ahead and scan the 
classes in these packages and create the various bins that are located there. Here we are going to place the controllers. Next I'll go ahead and create this directory. It doesn't exist yet. So I'll right click in this web app folder here and create another folder. This should be the templates folder and it should be located in the webinf folder. So I'll add here webinf and then I'll add here templates. Finish. And now we have that. Then I'll also just go ahead and create a SaveLet initializer class. So I'll right click here and create a new Java class. I'll just call it WebSaveLet in it. This class will extend the abstract annotation config dispatcher SaveLet initializer. So we'll extend. Then we'll add the following unimplemented method. Now, this is similar to a Java version of the web.xml file that we we'll normally configure in a normal XML configuration environment. This is the class that will first be executed when the application is started. It will configure the dispatcher safe light as well as configure the classes that we pass here and place them in the application context. So inside here, I'll just go ahead and pass this configuration class. So new class, it should be of type array. And inside here, I'll just pass in theme leaf config that class. And I'll also just go ahead here and add the safe led mapping. It's also of type array string. And I'll just add the following mapping. Now this is all done. I'll then just go ahead and create a controller in this package here. So I'll right click here and create a new Java class. That should be in this package. And I'll call it index controller. Finish. Or annotate it with a controller annotation. Then I'll create the following method public string show index page. This should return index. And this string will be the name of the HTML page that we are going to define here. And this method should be responding to the default route. So out here get mapping and setting the default route. So I'll create here some sample data so that we get to see the data in this index.html page that we are going to create in a moment. So out here a list of characters this is going to be the letters of the alphabet. So I'll just call it alphabet. And here I'll do a basic for loop and generate the letters of the alphabet. I'll add here a temp variable of type char. By so doing, we get to generate the letters of the alphabet. I'll just go ahead and cast this to a char. Then I'll pass this to this RLS. So alphabet dot add 
them and to pass this information to the view I need to declare a model I use the model here and pass that data to the view or just call it data and it is this alphabet here so next I'll just go ahead and create this index.html page so I'll right click here and create a new HTML file and it should be index.html next I'll select here HTML5 and finish. Then I'll change this encoding to UTF-8. And close the tag. Get rid of this. And then I'll add here the timely namespace. HTTP www.timely.org and I'll call it th and in the body here I'll loop through the array list and display the various characters so I'll add here a paragraph then I'll add here th h or just call it c and the array list is called data and then right here I'll add th text and set it to c so that is done I'll run this application on tomcat to see what happens so I right click here and select run on server. I'll select the Tomcat server here and take finish. And as you can see here, the integration was successful. We can see the data that we just pass in. So at this point, everything is okay. I'll just go ahead and make this to look nicer. This has nothing to do with this tutorial. I'm basically just playing around with this. So I'll add here a style and in this style I'll just add the following CSS properties to this paragraph. This will just be display of inline, inline block. You know, give it a color of red. I'll stop that and run it again. I choose the wrong server. Let me stop it before it deploys. I need to run it on Tomcat. This one. So this is basically it guys and um, this is the process you have to go through if you are not using Spring Boot that uh, basically configures almost everything for you. I hope you learned something from these tutorials once more. Please if you have done just go ahead and encourage me by hitting on the subscribe and the like button. Until the next tutorials, see you.